On the 12th of August 2021, Ariana Jacob filed a complaint against Taylor Lorenz and the New York Times, alleging that she, that she had been defamed through the article written by Taylor Lorenz and published on the New York Times, making several allegations of misconduct against her company influences. One of these allegations was that she had she had leaked nudes of one of her clients as well as installing cameras without the consent of of our clients these allegations amounted to several monetary losses as well as a subsequent loss of a business we covered the case extensively on 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 the channel in a shocking turn of events well at least for me because she had decided to voluntarily withdraw from the lawsuit and basically call it to an end today i sit down with her and discuss why she made the decision what is now in store for her and what she was basically going through with this lawsuit for the first time ever i speak to a complainant on the channel like you know that went through a lawsuit and it's the first time that i've ever ever experienced anything like this so i have a whole lot of gratitude for ariana jacob for for, for choosing to sit down with me this is the Heinz Griff, and this is the Grift, where we have conversations ab about implications of legal cases. Hello, Harry. Um, Ari, thank you so much for joining me. I butchered your name. I, That's okay. It's, it's not Harry like Harry and Meghan, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's show for Ariana Jacob, who was yes. literally in litigation with Taylor Lorenz. And if you don't know who Taylor Lorenz is, just look just look for the puddle of tears as you <laughs> leaving the as you're leaving the room, and you find her. You're hundred percent. But yeah, she's the crybaby of the internet, and she made the I call it the terrible mistake of going after Miss Ari Jacob because oh boy, was her pants pulled down since she done that. <laughs> oh Ari, thank you so much for sitting now with me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I feel like a uh, weight has been lifted off my shoulders since the case was closed. And but I met so many great people like yourself and uh, a lot. Many of you kind of kept me through and kept me pushing. And so uh, I'm very grateful for that. It's like, you know, part of it was losing my career. Then it was how do I you know, do I even have the strength and energy to build something back? And what, you know, what do I even have left? And then I think through meeting people online, telling my story, realizing that people do care about the truth and realizing that I have something to bring to the table, which is really, you know, over like about 20 years in uh, social media and digital marketing and in the content creator influencer space. I know influencer is like a dirty word. Everyone hates when I say it, but you know, that's what it is. That's what we call it as marketers. So sorry, I'm sorry if you're triggered by the word influencer. When Taylor came after me, in my opinion, it was because um, either she was jealous or she didn't want me in this space to grow because look how fast I've been growing in one month, you know, one or two months. Um, I didn't even give myself that credit. I think back then I was just really trying to build and and I was at the right place at the right time with the business, but she was represented by my competitors. So I think that she took me out either as a favor to them or um, to wipe me out as competition for herself because she's sort of wanted to be the only person that knew the history of the internet and social media and she even wrote a book about it and i think i was somebody that she looked at as okay this person could be competition for me and my agents don't like her they want her clients so why not just write a mean article in the new york times about her but uh everything's come full circle and to be honest <laughs> If anybody watching has gone through a tough time trying to rebuild their career, it's just it's it's hard whether you lost your business through COVID or you lost your business through a mean journalist or any other way. Rebuilding is very tough, but there is a silver lining. And I mean, I've I moved from from L.A. to Nevada. I, I live in Las Vegas and I met my boyfriend you know, met all of you wonderful people. And sometimes it really is cheesy, but it's like everything happens for a reason. So, so here we are. I want to just go back into your history in regards to uh, influences, because that's 
the company that 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 should, that, that was your talent agency. You, you know, you were, you were managing. T- uh, no, not Taylor. Damn, I, I, I got <laughs> damn annoying. Uh, Charlie Di Di Amelio, right. Brittany Brittany Rawlinson. I'm probably butcher. I'd probably just. Uh, Tom yeah, the, the kombucha Ta- girl, Brittany Broski. Kombucha I girl, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So you were managing those talents that were really doing big in TikTok, and the unique part about what you were doing was that TikTok was not really known for even having managers or having anything right. like that they were just people that were just making videos and putting it out there and they didn't really see the branding opportunities that will come with a viral video but you actually went there and was like i could make you brandable and you actually did it right. well not disclosing taylor herself is signed to a competing agency uta uta is a direct competitor to ari jacobs influences how how comes you decided to say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not going to go through court. I'm not going to do all this. Why did you choose to do that? So that's a really good question. And I think that people, now you have to realize she wrote the article on August 14th, uh, 2020. And uh, I, I believe it was like, I don't know, maybe six months ago that the uh, it's now, you know, we're into almost summer of, uh, 2024. So it's been almost four years that I've been dealing with this and there's been different ups and downs of it. I think the initial hardest part was to sue the New York times because I didn't have money. I I really, she depleted me of all my resources except for my Rolodex, which I did have, you know, I knew people Um, and people (laughs) knew I got screwed over. You know, they, they looked at what happened, but they were like, you can't sue the New York times. They haven't lost a case since the 1960s and you don't have the money to. And even if you did billionaires sue the media and they don't win. So why do you think you can do it? And so, when I filed, when I found an attorney, my friend Joe Sibley, shout out to him, he's amazing. He filed it within the year time frame that we had and figured out, you know, where we were going to do it and everything like that. And that was like the first sign of hope. Okay, could be because I said like, okay, I, everybody told me this was impossible. So, you know, to answer your question, I'll, I'll go through. I can go through a couple other reasons why it was so impossible, but. Uh, we did get through the the motion to dismiss, which is the hardest part, which is where the judge right. says, okay, something here is not just an opinion, it was false, and we had to prove malice. Taylor knew it was false, mm-hmm. that, te- that we had to prove that Taylor knew it was false before she published the story, which is very difficult because it's hard to get into someone's brain, but she actually admitted that she knew I didn't leak the photos in the pre-publication emails, which you know you covered, I think most extensively uh, on your channel. And I couldn't draw away. I mean, social abuse is something that I'm <laughs> just not okay with. I just knew it was false just by listening to the lingo. And for some, I, I come from a business background as well, so I kind of know the end. And I used to be a DJ as well, so I kind yeah, of knew yeah. the entertainment industry already and how management will work and all those things. And now I'm like. Without seeing your second amendment, uh, right? Know, to, to, a second to, amendment to, complaint, yeah. A second amendment complaint, yeah. Without even seeing that, I was like, I did, "This is bogus. This is." I, I just had a feeling this was bogus. And the most important part about that, uh, when the judge decided to grant uh, grant you the case and move it forward, it was the fact that he that Taylor alleged that you were leaking nudes. I, I'm reading yeah. here. That was the was that leaking. was the statement that the judge because it was like the worst statement. I mean, it really yes. was. She said I was oh. leaking nude photographs of a client. Here was the real reason. So people are like, well, how could she twist that? Like, why would she even say you were leaking someone's photos? So I managed a a TikTok house. Uh, well, I managed three, but at the time I managed one that was full of uh, girls. Um, over 18. I mean, I think there was one that was 17, but she didn't live in the house. So, you know, she, it was like, I didn't want people under 18 at the houses. I knew that Name was is- going to be a liability. Look, I mean, these are young people. They yeah. they know that, that, that drama thrives on the internet. I believe that a lot of young people are feigning victi- victimhood. They're pretending to be victims 
while in order to get famous and it doesn't matter who they take down. So that's where the term cry bully comes from. That's also what Taylor Lorenz does. It's like, let's cry. But while we're fake crying crocodile tears, we're also going to bully somebody that doesn't deserve it. So I don't like that kind of behavior. I'm not saying that they're terrible people. I think they're young and immature and they're seeing that this type of behavior works. Oh, I got on the New York Times. Oh, wow. I get paying attention by these people. Oh, I get, you know, so they're seeing that and that's a problem. And so if we don't hold them accountable, how is anybody going to learn? And what happened was I had a 25 year old guy that Devian Young, that someone had messaged me and said, this guy is sending nudes to a 14 year old girl. And I said, how do you know that? Well, there's a telegram chat with over a hundred thousand people. And that's what everybody's saying. And the pictures are on the internet and, and they're tagging your company, your, your at influences oh, next yeah. to it. So I said, can you send me what you're talking about? You know, like I didn't even see nudes. They send me little tiny thumbnails that were like blurred out. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. And they sent me what was on the chat, like not nudes. They didn't send me nudes at all. They sent me a screenshot of what was in this chat with hundreds of thousands of people. So yeah. I immediately texted Debian, the guy, and I said, what is this? Did you send nudes to a 14 year old girl? Imagine if I didn't check on that, if I was just a manager and said, oh, whatever, he's not sending nudes. That's reckless and it's right. not ethical. And there could have been somebody hurt, you know, a, right, a, a right, young right. woman, like, I don't know, you know, a kid basically. So right. I'm like, I don't know if it was true. I don't know. So, but I asked Debian and he said, oh, yeah, someone broke into my iCloud and leaked my nudes everywhere. Basically what he told me. So he leaked his own nudes. I had nothing to do with that. But how did Taylor write it in the story? Oh, she yeah. quoted Devion, this person. She quoted him and said, Ari leaked my nudes for revenge and, to, and sent them to my business partners. But that I'm was a very important thing that he said. He leaked my nudes and sent them to business partners. It didn't say she leaked by nudes by sending them to business partners. Right. Because then maybe she would have gotten away with it. Everybody like, you know what I mean? Because to the average person, you and I, even though we know that the media lies and we might read a story really fast and like, well, you know what I mean? Like, we're just going along with our lives. Nobody has right. time to in inspect every little thing that they see. So anyway, we got through with that one statement. Now, let me answer your question. Why did we why we basically uh, settled it with no money? We got nothing. Um, and that's because even though the statement went forward, I was going to have to prove that just that statement is the one that caused all my damages. So, for example, let's say I'm getting deposed by New York Times, which, by the way, has the best lawyers in the country to defend Taylor. They're going to ask me, OK, Ari, well, let's just pretend that this one sentence was taken out of the article. Do you think you still would have lost your clients? If I were going to answer honestly, I. I might have to say, yeah, I mean, yeah, probably, you know, because the whole rest of it wasn't good either. I mean, so. But you, but you obviously you can't go into that because it's those statements are not admitted. Right. So how do you prove that just one thing? So in order to prove it, I would have to have, you know, people don't understand social media, how it works. People don't even understand that people get paid tens of thousands of dollars to post and TikTok video, you know, so imagine you're in front of a jury or the judge, even the judge could clearly, in my opinion, didn't understand the business because there was different things that he allowed uh, or he didn't allow to go forward that I'm like, no, this was clearly a lie. But yeah. he didn't understand, in my opinion, the 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 way the industry works and why that would have damage of the business. But regardless, now we're going to try to explain all this to a jury of people that probably have nine to five jobs, not probably in marketing. They don't understand this. And also it gets people angry when they hear that influencers make tens of thousands of dollars. They, it, you know what it does? I, cause I've been on other interviews and stuff and I see the chat and it gets people mad just to know that people make a living from this. And so they see me as the problem. They're like, well, screw her. She shouldn't be making money on it either. And screw these kids. I screw everybody here. They don't like it. And so you have to understand that it would have been a very hard battle and I would have to pay 
tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand dollars, just to pay for the damages experts, for the depositions to happen. Now I had my lawyers fees covered their hours. Now that was probably like a million dollars. They, 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 uh, basically did in order to, to take my case, you know, between, uh, Harmy and, um, the Dylan law group and right. Joe Sibley, because, uh, the Dylan law group jumped in and they provided a lot of support and I'm very thankful to them. Um, shout out to your friend Ron <laughs> Coleman, by the way, it's very hard to raise money for a lawsuit when anything that you say to the to the funders, like, let's say I have a rich friend and I'm like, Hey, can you fund my lawsuit? All of that is going to go in discovery. So, mm. you know, then the other side could say, well, look, she's getting people to invest in her case because they hate the New York times. I knew that everything would go in discovery, but to be honest with you, I didn't know that like everything, anytime I mentioned her name on a DM on a text, they, the New York Times would get to see it. I mean, even I didn't know that. And so I think that's an important lesson for anybody that doesn't know much about filing a lawsuit is like, even if you're the plaintiff, you have to give up everything. And I, I'm not saying I'm ashamed of anything I sent. Like I'm, I didn't defame her. Um, I didn't do anything like that, but you know, the, the, the other side is very smart and they can play it like this. They could say, look at this girl, Ari. She, all she talks about is Taylor Lorenz. She doesn't talk about anything else. She's a crazy person. She's insane. Look at, yeah. look at her always texting. She doesn't, te she doesn't post about anything else. Well, I think that could also go to like damages of like, look how crazy you drove Ari. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, she was this okay before and you drove her. This girl that was just your own business and then you <laughs> you broke her. You, you, this is but psychological you know, damages, guys. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really was. And we tried to, I think, add on like the emotional distress. It, the whole thing, it's very difficult. And so mm. even though we had the chance to go forward, I didn't have, I would have had to take an out a huge loan. And by the way, it's not a slam dunk. It's like a 20% we maybe win because, and... What if we win, but the damages are like 60,000 and you just took 100,000 out? Like, and forget about the time. What about the time? I already did four years in Taylor Lorenz jail. I don't wanna spend another, you know, yes, I did wanna stand up for, you know, uh, the New York Times and all this, but maybe a, a billionaire should, should mm. take the reins and or, they should have funded my case. They should have put the money in the account. I don't know. They should have wired it to 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 uh, the firm. But like, you know, so at this point, I think I made a decision. It's like a business decision at that point. Right. And I had I had already won in my eyes. Like I really had won. Like I had won the experience that I learned uh, having been. I don't even want to call it red pill because I feel like red pill is like something else, but it's, it's like, I woke up. Now. It's a child. Yeah. Three years later, please some bitch that makes the same fucking allegations again. I yeah. woke up to the media, to political stuff, to entertainment people. Like I just woke up to how everything works and I would have been living in a very naive place had I not, you know, discovered that. And, and I think that my life has a purpose now that's better than just representing TikTokers that are dancing and want to be famous. I think there's something to um, always striving to do your best and to always be honest, like even little things now, like if somebody says like, I'm, uh, if I'm running late, which I'm always running late because I have ADHD and I'm not excusing myself, but I'm saying I used to always make up a story. Now I'm like, that's a lie. Why? Why? Just don't make it up. Nobody cares. I, I don't know if you've heard me say this, but I talk about it all the time. It's like maybe it, it also ages me because I remember this movie, but the Eminem movie, he's doing rap battles, the whole eight movie mile, and yeah. at, yeah. at eight mile. And in the end, he's rap battling against this guy who is like the, his biggest competitor of rap and it's this guy that seems like he's a tough guy he's hard he's like in the hood and basically and then they make fun of um eminem because he lives in a trailer park with his mom and you know his best he somebody hooked up with his girl i think his best friend hooked up with his girl i forget what it is but he comes out and he's like yes i do live in a trailer park with my mom and yes you know the blah, most blah, authentic blah. thing because and then because he's like but then, you're that's actually very 
Yeah. That's actually he very says interesting. At the end, he says, but your name is Clarence, and you live at home with, are you? And, and, and Clarence, parents have a very good, good marriage. marriage. And you're out here trying to be fakes. Cause ain't no such thing as right. that way, bro. You know, he calls him out for being fake. Right. And I think that's like the biggest mic drop moment. And if we can all like have that energy, you get what I'm saying? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I had to, no, I had no, to no. tell the I, end I, of the rap. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I interrupted you, but I was gonna add to your point and say even back then, uh, because back then it was it was about image, you know, in the industry. It was about you got to have a perfectly crafted image. That's what the labels wanted, etc. So when he did that and was really authentic with his music and rap, it changed everything because you're now seeing kind of his products coming through. I also wanna go uh, go back to what you uh, to what you were talking about in regards to the lawsuits and i do understand your position to be uh to be quite honest because i personally thought you would win it um i don't know defamation too well or, or the i do know that what you could prove would be limited to the statement that was being used and that was just just this one statement i personally mm -hmm. thought the camera you know the consent form and the cameras were for that i thought that would get in too but it didn't which I think if that did go in, it would have opened the scope much wider because I think that's what really caused a lot of damage. You're having children mm -hmm. uh, and installing cameras. The, alle the allegation was you're installing cameras in- Without their consent, right? Yeah, without yeah, without their consent. Imagine like the stress. I mean, me and my lawyer stayed up. We pulled an all-nighter to answer all the questions and we tried to do everything very thoroughly. But like maybe had I sent the agreement where she signed, like, I know there's cameras. If we had sent that to Taylor, maybe she wouldn't have put that in the story. But the problem is that I felt it was unethical to send Taylor my contracts with would, the influencers. It I mean, would be, though. That's a, you know, I, like, I, I why am I, you for that. I didn't know what the influencers had said, but just because somebody else does the wrong thing doesn't mean I'm going to do the wrong thing. The most important part is that I want to know was how you were doing in the midst of all of this ish storm. Uh, you know, because you're seeing waves and waves of tweets defending someone that you know that is lying about you. I mean, the best example I have is when she said that the motion to dismiss, the case has been dismissed, it's all gone, etc. right? And this time here, it was only dismissed to be amended. It took an early victory lap. Yeah. Right, right. Everything in life, I mean, and I do have to thank her because, I mean, I wouldn't have met the love of my life if I didn't move to Vegas. I wouldn't have moved to Vegas if um, Taylor didn't write the article. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, mm -hmm. what is the point of also waiting another, what? Like, it's been four years. You think it's going to be another year, two years? Let's say it's three years. And by the way, I can't be a commentator because anything I say, the New York Times... I can take it. Yeah. Remember how scared I was to like even message you? I, re I, I remember. I remember. Like I was going on uh, Legal Vice's stream one time and we were all drinking and luckily they said I didn't do anything stupid. But <laughs> I'm like, what if the New York Times brings in a drunk video of me on YouTube and they say, you see, we don't owe her any damages. She ruined her own reputation. I was walking on eggshells and I wasn't able to be myself. And like, honestly, it's very freeing. I've had friends call me being like, I haven't heard you be more happy like since this whole ordeal started. And that just made me realize I made the right decision to, you know, back out. of. The, and also, by the way, like we we let's say they 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 had said, OK, let's go to mediation. The New York Times doesn't settle cases with money. So maybe they would have taken that sentence out but it would have maybe been a negotiation, right? So let's say we negotiate and they say, okay, we'll take out the nude sentence, but if you sign this and we take it out, then you can't talk about the case forever. Well, I'm not gonna give my just right to speak. Sentence. Just so do you know sentence. what I'm saying? What do I have yeah. to negotiate with? Let's just back out. Mic drop, I'm out of here. Peace, Taylor Lorenz. Go live your life, I don't care. Anybody who's going to put themselves on the internet and say, I'm a public figure, I'm going to talk about my opinions. Also, by the way, we can't be like little pretty little slow snowflakes. Like, if somebody doesn't like me, fine. I don't care. I mean, especially if it's somebody that I thought was my friend when you're really just a fake person. I, 
I would rather you expose yourself. Show me who you are so I can believe it. It's sometimes hurtful, you know, when people leave. I had people that left my life uh, because they knew I was in a lawsuit. They didn't want to, if I had ever talked to them about Taylor Lorenz, maybe they they knew that this would be discovery. I don't know. There, there's just people that left my life and it's it hurts because I like I like to be liked. I don't know about you. I like it when people like me, you know? I think everybody does to an extent. Do you think that, that the way that you are as a personality is going to limit your output can i say like that output in terms of how much you can say how much you want to say because you're trying to think okay but i want subs okay but i want views i want you know oh, I want, no. want all these things but if i no. lose them you know yeah what? no i don't i don't care about like that i think that like you know first of all i i'm willing to say if i made a mistake you know what i mean um if I got something wrong, like I'm going to be the first person to say I made a mistake. Um, but also all I'm here is doing is my opinion. So do I like think that, you know, I, I'm not worried about like getting sued or that type of thing. I even I, I'm, I you know, you can get an umbrella policy and, and they can cover you for defamation. Kind of like I think Amber Heard did that. So uh, I, I recommend that all content creators get um, get that kind of insurance that covers you for defamation because you never know that anybody can sue you for anything. But, um, you know, I think that, I think that everybody's not for everybody. Like if you're trying to reach everybody, you're going to reach nobody. And so you have to be comfortable with your niche. I think what I want my niche to be is, uh, helping people understand the content creator world. I, I don't know if you saw, but I posted like a long thing with advice for those, um, the, the, the like frat guys that lifted up the American flag at, I think it was like Columbia, I forget which college. And they're getting all these donations. I think they raised $500,000 to throw a party. I wrote down like a long post and said like, these are my advice to you because overnight success can bring a lot of problems. And like, those are the things I wanna do. If I see something in culture, people talking about something, I'm gonna say, you know, the other thing. I, I got a lot of flack for talking about the redhead woman that um, left the oh, OF uh, world, the, yeah, I Nala Ray. I, I saw that and I really loved your stance on that. I do understand what you were trying to say because end of the day, using religion to kind of absolve yourself from every kind of, I mean, not absolve, but like what? clean up your image, so to speak. I don't what? think it's, I think it's something that other people would would find this day for. Imagine, like, for example, I, I remember this same criticism being levied against Andrew Tate and Islam. I think what I think was unfair about that, and the reason I spoke out about it, again, I didn't call her names. I didn't, I wanted to, like, understand the whole thing. I watched a two and a half hour interview on Michael Knowles. I doubt very much that people sat through that whole thing. I think maybe people saw the clips of her saying like, I gave my life to God. And yes, you do have a clean slate with God. If you're a Christian person, that's what we believe. And you do have a clean slate, but it means that you live your life trying to live like it's like a night and day, like you wake up and you follow God every day. Okay. But here's the thing, people are not understanding, is we live in, in a world, Gary Vee just released a book, Day Trading Attention. Mm. Day trading is usually with money, right? We are living in a world where attention is currency. So if Nala Ray, this influencer that did, you know, corn on the <laughs> internet, if that person is now chasing attention, she's chasing money. And guess what? She's doing it at the expense of her family, which by the way, she went on that interview and trashed her parents. And what about the OF girl that leaves OF because she saw Nala Ray and Nala Ray says, well, I'm going live on TikTok to talk about God and that's how I make money now. Well, well uh, Nala I mean, Ray said she lied about that. I mean, she texted me and said, I haven't gone live in four months. So I said, why are you going on the internet saying that's how you make money now? That's a lie. So then the OF girl leaves OF and she can't make money. And guess who she's going to blame? God. That's not fair. Why did you decide to go down this route? Like, what was that? Was there like a burning passion that you like, I must, I, I must do this. Like, because, I mean, I think that, because, that, yeah, go ahead. No, no, because I, I, I was, I was only going to say, 
it's a massive change from not just branding TikTok talents, but also going from a lawsuit and then being like, I'm just gonna be a, 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 a content creator now, which is, I'm like, okay, but walk me through that. Like what actually, what was that moment? I mean, I guess that I have always known how to be a content creator. I mean, if you look at my YouTube channel, I have videos from like 2009 and I guess I in a way, I, it up. <laughs> One second. yeah, yeah. I have like old videos. You'll see. I have. It's funny because I I used to vlog, and I can't I even, even get in. That. My what main channel is is youtube.com slash influences, but I have another one that's youtube.com slash little miss Jacob, and I can't even get into it because I don't know the password. But I have old videos in there, like vlogs and stuff. And you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't know, some of you guys may have seen my video when I was nine years old and I had a cardboard box. I put it around my head and I was I was sick of seeing the OJ Simpson trial on TV. And so I stole my mom's camera and I pretended like I was like an announcer. I'm like, oh, um, but I was doing that at nine years old before TikTok even existed, or sorry, YouTube even existed. So obviously like, I think I've always been a creator. What was difficult for me was to monetize. I was going to college and I had to have a job and then I dropped out of college to start a business. And my dad was like, I'm not gonna fund you know, your company because you didn't finish college, which is fair. I think I've always known that I could do this. And ultimately, if I had done TikTok when all, when TikTok was getting big, if I had done, you know, all the things when instead of focusing on other people, helping other people build their brand, I'm like, why don't I just, you know, work on myself? And I've watched the law tubers do it. And it's like, I have all the knowledge of, of how to do this. I'm a good editor. I can do my own thumbnails. I can, I'm a, I've done, you know, Photoshop since I was literally, since it came out. So um, <laughs> why don't I just do this? And so, and I saw that uh, X was a place where I could focus that maybe it would grow as well. What I really know is is influence. How do you influence people? It's not just influencers. It's like, what is the, the science behind influence and changing hearts and minds? And I believe that that comes from approaching something with kindness, with um, honesty, with the ability to say, I might be wrong asking questions. Now, if you're upset that I'm asking questions and that hurts your little baby feelings, then I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to put up with that. But baby feelings. But let we can approach things, you know what I mean, with like some honesty. And listen, people thought I was harsh with Nala, but I never called her. Like again, I I'm I don't even think she's a bad person. I think she's addicted to fame. And I think this is a problem that we all need to be exposed to so that we can recognize it when somebody else, because that's what ultimately really hurt me, which was all these influencers that I was giving my time and money and energy to, and they turned on me for fame. And it didn't help them. They're not famous. So you have been here and done it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. with, with like, you know, managing talent. And you're now a content creator who I believe is receiving her buzz. You might not see it the same, but <laughs> when the view, when the numbers are crunching, I mean, you kind of can't ignore it. What do you advise to anyone that's going through, uh, you know, these, like, you know, whether it be the legal process or whether it will be content creating process, what do you advise uh, for them? I think first and foremost, like, just have some humility. Even if bad things happen to you, can you take some accountability? Like, did I bite off more than I could chew, chew probably? Did I, you know, think that I could, uh, did I think that, you know, I didn't know how the media works. So I have to take responsibility for that. I didn't know those things. And maybe if I had, you know, maybe. So I, I think it's like first, Take accountability, even in, and also give yourself grace. Like, don't be so hard on yourself because all of us are we're so hard on ourselves, especially if you have like, you know, ADD or OCD, anything like that. We're all ruminating so much in our heads. And if like we think about it, like we would never sometimes say the things we say to ourselves to other people, you know. So I think that you have to catch yourself when you're being too hard on yourself and and let that go and and try and try to build it like a reflex like a muscle of like 
if you catch yourself being mean to yourself, just stop, you know, and, and mm. actually say something nice to yourself. It sounds really <laughs> cheesy, but it is like a psychological thing. And, um, and then also give yourself credit for, for the, whatever it is that you have and that you're good at, but also don't be afraid to have several things going on. Uh, you know, um, have a full-time job. Maybe you have work you're waiting tables, maybe you're, and you're doing the content creation at the same time. This kind of job is not handed to anybody. And if you look at Mr. Beast, may, maybe it's not that way for Charlie D'Amelio because she really did have overnight success. She wasn't making tons of videos, you know, over and over again. And, and even though I really like Charlie and her family, I think that she doesn't have the experience that like Marquise Brownlee has, or, uh, uh, you know, Jake Paul and Logan, they, they all went through these experiences because they had a long time. You just can't o expect overnight success. And so it's, it's like with anything with, when you're an entrepreneur, you remember that, that uh, meme where they're like digging for gold and then they're like almost there. And then he's about to give up the same meme it's that like, Drake, that, that, that Drake tries sending into Kendrick and Kendrick was like, shut up. Oh, I, didn't that, see it. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's different from the meme of like the girl that looks like Taylor Lorenz where she's like shoveling poop onto the other side of the wall. And then they fling it back and, and, then, like, and then they fling it back and she's like, oh, misogyny. You're killing me. Oh my God. And it's so isolating. And terrifying. It's horrifying. Surround yourself with good people, but do the research. You know, I started a locals channel, which I didn't even know what locals was. And then I, I signed up for it. And it's kind of like, you know, people can can have a membership, all this stuff. And so the other day I went live starting from when I wake up in the morning, I just put my phone, you know, like this. And then it's it's like filming everything I'm doing. And it's probably boring for a long time, but maybe you got a nugget of like, oh, she uses that software to edit her thing or oh, that's how she does the thing. And there's people messaging me on Twitter being like, hey, can you mentor me And on social media? I'm like, well, for five bucks a month, you can basically live my day with me. And honestly, that's the best I can do. You know, I, I, I do try to mentor people, not just for money, but like I just I, I try to help people as much as I can. Want to have a peer group that you are, con you know, that you're constantly sharing ideas with, you're seeing what they're doing, you're interacting with them, whatever. Then you have another third that's above you that's more successful than you that is um you know and and that can be in other areas maybe they're more successful you as a content creator or maybe they're just you know successful at whatever their career is and just being around those people it's good for you as well and then have another third of people that you mentor that are not to say beneath you but that are at a different level than you with their career with their relationships with whatever it is and if you manage that type of um, mixture of people around you um, and don't live in the echo chamber, like because when when you have good people around you, if you're saying something, you know, funny, like let's say you didn't think of that the thing about Nala Ray was good. And if you message me, maybe I would say, OK, like, let me think about this if I really want to say this. Right. But if it's coming from people you don't like or that, you know, don't care about you or that, you know, are trying to harm you, then guess what? People just shut down. So. So know who you, you know, know who your friends are, who you're, who, and, and try to have a wide range of people that you connect with and stuff like, and learn from. Um, but also keep your circle small, like your real circle, know who they are, and then just be yourself. The reason I think that my, my content will resonate and why I picked the lane of also like peeking behind the curtain of the influencer world and the content creator world and entertainment is because they, nobody teaches you this stuff because the agents and the managers, they don't want you to know the secret sauce because it's actually not rocket science. I, I'm so glad that I, that I got to speak with you today because I think it's very important. And I, I think it's very important for content creators to actually understand that they are entrepreneurs first, content creators second. I'm not sure if you agree with that statement, but... I definitely do, yeah. But that's the way I, I, I kind of, for me to enjoy doing this because... I kind of had to remember that when I was a DJ because that's what really pushed me to, you know, take that seriously. You're you're never going to, I don't think that you're anybody, it doesn't matter what your career is. I don't think that you get to a certain point in life and you're like, 
I made it. Like no. there's like like there's nothing yeah. there's nothing else gonna matter after this because I made it and everything is gonna be fine. In fact, I was watching um Simone Biles that she had an interview with um the call her daddy girl and she said when she won the Olympics, I think I don't know if she had won it twice already by by nineteen. I know she had won a gold medal, um pretty sure. And so she said like I was happy for like two seconds and then I was filled with dread. What if this is the best thing I'm ever going to do in my life? I mean, she had just won a gold medal. That's how we are. Every We all like this. We all are so hard on ourselves. We can't even like hang out for a moment because, you know, people that are have the drive to be entrepreneurs is like you're saying, we have this thing. It's like an insatiable thing of like being better, doing better, mm-hmm. doing more. Um But, you know, one thing I definitely learned and I hopefully I can pass this on is that don't don't put your identity in what you do for a living, because when Taylor wrote that article about me and destroyed my business, I was always Ari with influences, Ari with influences for like, you know, since 2013 when I bought that domain. And when I wasn't Ari with influences, I was like. I'm nobody. I don't even know who I am. I hate myself. I, 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 I had this thing that I thought was so important. And then because it got taken away and I survived and I'm still here, I realized like that didn't mean anything. That didn't mean anything. You know, you can build back. You're going to be strong. You're not going to. That's why I don't think if you're going to be a content creator and you're not going to stand for something, for truth, for uh, making people laugh, for if you're just going to be there to get your own head bigger, to 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 make your ego, uh, you know, if you're just going to be there to drink your own Kool-Aid, then don't be a content creator that you are adding worse stuff into the world. But if you stand for something and you want to learn and you want to help people and you want to grow, then then be a content creator. But don't think that if it goes away that you're worthless because that's just not true. You also have to understand that if you go on the Internet and 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 cry about it, it's okay. But just know like you're always going to get criticized. So you could either be yourself, eight mile, drop the mic, and then it is what it is. You know what I mean? And be have some thick skin because you have to be strong to be in this. Like if I didn't have thick skin, I wouldn't be here right now. Uh, and I was in the low of the low. You know what I mean? So, but it is what it is. I think, I think you just, if you're going to be a content creator, just know that it's not everything, even if it doesn't work out, even if you do it to the point where you're like, I, I can't do this. I have to work other jobs and don't be, a, it's not a failure. It's just uh, a bump in the road. All, I like to a call bump it. in the road. Yeah. I think, I think we're going to end it here because nothing can top that moment. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> no, no. I appreciate you Ari for, uh, for speaking with me today and you know, please go and check out her YouTube channel is, uh, Influences, correct? Well, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, is there, is there, is there influences. influences? Huh? Yeah, you can also find it if you go to littlemissjacob.tv. Littlemissjacob.tv, little 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 yes, you can all. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I've been watching your content since, uh, ever since, and I pretty much enjoy what you have to put out. Maybe it's the, entre- maybe it's the entrepreneur in me. Maybe it's just I'm always, I'm, I'm chronically on YouTube, but... They're, well, they're we're really... friends. I consider you a real friend, even though you're my internet friend. <laughs> I mean, I've met a lot of internet friends. Like, um, and oh. and by the way, now that the loss is over, like you could text me. Don't worry, I'm not like. <laughs> I'm just like I was also looking out for you. I'm like, what would it would happen if like all our text <sighs> messages go into court? I don't remember oh what we said God. about Taylor, but could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine Heinz subpoenaed? Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <you> could <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you did enjoy that interview with Ari Jacob. If you would like extended coverage of cases that we cover, make sure you head over to our sister channel called Catch Up Court where we go through trial trial watch as well as reading filings and giving you comprehensive updates on legal cases. It's all happening over there. Make sure you hit subscribe on there as well as on here and hit the like button. I also would like to give a shout out to all the members that have signed up to Heinz All. Every single one of you are so important and that goes for William Mollock, 
Lose Princess Consuela, Megan J, Rosalind Duke, Nom de Plume, Random Girl, and Yelly Bean. I appreciate all of your contributions and for you know uh, being members. New exclusive videos are coming right to Heinz Halls. We have also launched a Patreon service as well as a Discord. So do keep an eye out on that community tab because I will be posting updates on there. If you like interviews, you can check out the latest one with a senior lecturer at Manchester Met University, as well as a playlist of all the interviews that i done for the Dead Be Heard docuseries. But in the meantime, I appreciate every single one of you for taking the time out to watch this video. Take care of yourself and have a great day. Bye-bye.